This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at Bloomberg GPT. This is Bloomberg's 50 billion parameter large language model, purpose built from scratch for finance. Okay, so what they are saying over here is that they have developed a large language model okay, called Bloomberg GPT, which is a 50 billion parameter language model. It is trained on wide range of financial data. So they constructed a 363 billion token data set based on Bloomberg's extensive data sources. This is the largest domain specific data set yet augmented with 345 billion tokens from general purpose data sets. Our mixed data set training leads to a model that outperforms existing models based on, uh, on financial tasks by significant margins without sacrificing performance on general large language benchmarks. This is what they claim over here. So this is quite an interesting paper. Uh, there is a lot to learn from this paper. So I will start with first looking at the data sets. Okay. Then I will uh, go to the architecture and so on. Okay. Uh, so here in the data set, what they have done is that they have created their own data set called fin file of financial information. Okay. Right. And this has close to 363, uh, if I'm not wrong, billion tokens. Let me quickly check that over here. Yeah. 363 billion token data set. Okay. This is purely the financial data set or financial information, which they have collected. Okay. Another 345 billion is your general data sets. Okay. So let's look into a little bit details of what constitutes this financial data set. Okay. So this data is timestamped, but they are not using the dates currently. So this consists of uh, say 298 billion tokens from web data set. Okay. So Bloomberg collects web content by identifying sites that contain financially relevant information. So they have crawled for financially uh, relevant information. Okay. They have their own web crawl, which was focused on high quality websites that have financially relevant information. Okay. So this is one major part of their financial data set, major part of their fin pile. Okay. So document types are highly varied as would be expected from web crawl. Uh, there could be region specific sources also like US, Asia pack and so on. Then they have a news category, which has 38 billion tokens. Okay. Uh, the news category includes all news sources, excluding news articles written by Bloomberg journalists. Okay. At the overall, there are hundreds of English news sources in Finpile, including Bloomberg trans transcripts, which are transcripts of Bloomberg TV news. Okay. Uh, the content in this data set comes from reputable sources of news. So this is news other than Bloomberg, uh, uh, like news articles written by Bloomberg journalists. Okay. And transcripts. Then you have filings, which are publicly available company filings, uh, financial statements. So this is from, uh, your, uh, filings comes from Edgar, which is the SEC's online database. Okay. Filings are typically long PDF documents with tables and charts that are dense in financial information. Then you also have press category, which is by, uh, you know, typically issued by companies that are financially relevant. Okay. This is press releases from companies. This is company financial listings. Okay. And then you have Bloomberg's own, uh, authored news and other documents. Okay. And transcripts and things like that. So this is how they collected their custom data set. Okay. So they have a huge advantage because they are in this domain and they could create this data set. This is also important for other companies which are looking at creating similar models in various domains. So they should have access to their domain data. Okay. For creating such data sets. And then they have the public data sets. I would not go into public data sets. Um, you can read over it. Okay. So here for tokenization, they chose the Unigram tokenizer instead of subword or byte pair encoding kind of tokenizer or word piece or something. So they use something called Unigram tokenizer. So they treat data as a sequence of bytes rather than Unicode characters. And uh, we include each of the 256 bytes as tokens in a pre tokenization step, the input byte sequence is broken into ch chunks by greedily matching the following regular expression. Okay. 
so this is how uh, the to they do the tokenization okay and they do something called parallel tokenizer training and other things you can read the paper okay uh, so i think somewhere they have explained the hyperparameters of the model over here yes uh, so the total tokens are 569 billion uh, the hardware used is 64 into 8 a 140 gb and nvidia graphics cards okay here are some hyperparameters the number of layers of this uh, transformer model is 70 number of heads in each layer is 40 right hidden dimension is 7680 the vocabulary size for the tokens is 131072 total parameters is 50.6 billion and how they reach these parameters and this uh, thing they've explained over here the number of layers number of heads etc uh, and the hidden dimension i'll come to that okay so the ar architecture of this model is based on decoder only causal language model based on bloom okay the model consists of 70 layers of transformer decoder blocks and here they've explained the transformer uh, layers basically each layer will consist of an uh, self attention and a feed forward network okay that is what they are uh, follow uh, there is a layer normalization also that's what they have explained over here they use something called lb positional encoding uh, uh, at the self attention component of the transformer network okay through additive biases input token embeddings are tied to the linear mapping before the final softmax so what the the model has an additional layer normalization after token embeddings so this is the initial stage basically right in the first layer that is what they explain over here okay and uh, how did they come up to the model size and parameters so their model is based on the size of the model is based on chinchilla scaling loss so there was this chinchilla paper which came out sometime last year which talks about given a compute budget okay what is the good architecture and what are the number of tokens required and uh, parameters for the model okay so in this paper there are a couple of approaches approach one and approach two whereby you can actually put your computing budget basically what they say say over here is they had a total compute budget of 1.3 million gpu hours on 40 gb a 100 gpus okay so when they plug that into this equation over here uh, the calculations implied that the data set of 700 billion tokens is too small for chinchilla optimal configuration given our compute budget okay but they can't increase the data because um, they want uh, it to be uh, you know uh, they need domain specific training data also they cannot increase that okay pin pile is already the largest domain specific training set okay and we don't want to represent it less than half of our total training so they didn't want to increase the number of tokens from the general domain okay uh, so what they did was uh, they can train on all uh, tokens and still leave 30 percent of total compute budget so this leads to a 50 billion parameter model this is how they decided that their model should have 50 billion parameters okay so then what they did is there is this particular equation which says what should be the number of layers and hidden dimensions for such a a number of parameters so from that they selected you know the values of 70 and hidden dimension is 7510 so finally they settled on 40 heads for the attention on this thing uh, okay each having a dimension of 192 thereby resulting in a total dimension of d is equal hidden dimension is 7680 in the transformer model and a total of 50.6 billion parameters so this is how they have actually come to you know this table where they had this like uh, shape of the model right so this is how they have come to that so this is also interesting because anybody who wants to create such models can use this chinchilla laws and uh, you know come up with these computations based on their compute budget for an optimal large language model okay so then they talk about training so it is trained on a standard left to right causal language modeling objective so uh, they are training sequences to be exactly same length so 2048 tokens to maximize gpu utilizations so if you have multiple documents they concatenate them with the end of text uh, token as document separator and they break this token sequence into 2048 tokens and that's how they do training over here okay uh, optimization details are given uh, this is interesting for the hardware stack they use the amazon SageMaker service so, provided by aws to train and evaluate 
GPT, Bloomberg GPT. Uh, so they use this 64 P4D dot 24x large instances. Each has eight NVIDIA 40 GP A100 GPUs. So totally they required 512 40 GB A100 GPUs for this training. Okay. And they did some optimization techniques also like uh, zero optimization, uh, you know, uh, mix and activation checkpointing. So you can read the details over here. Each of this would require a lot more time to get into, but they did a lot of these optimizations. Okay. And then they did the training over here. Uh, okay. So they trained a total of uh, 139k steps for 53 days and ended model training after completing 80% of one epoch. I was also interested in knowing the cost of engaging Amazon hardware, this much hardware for 53 days. Uh, somehow I don't see it anywhere disclosed in this paper. That would also be interesting to know, like what was the cost required to create such a huge language model, okay? And then finally, they evaluated this particular model on a set of, you know, internal financial tasks, Bloomberg public financial task and general purpose tasks. Okay. So they had five uh, tasks or public data sets in the financial domains, 12 Bloomberg internal financial tasks, which are named entity recognition sentiment analysis tasks. And these are your general purpose tasks. Okay. Which was like uh, reasoning and general NLP tasks. I wouldn't go into this. And they compared GPT with models, uh, Bloomberg GPT with models like Bloom, OPT, GPT, NeoX, and in some cases, GPT-3 wherever possible. Okay. So this is the evaluation model cohort. And let's go to what they did in terms of uh, the evaluation. Uh, so they use a combination of public internal benchmarks to assess, as I told before. So these are the tasks which they consider and these are the kind of prompts. So for sentimental uh, sentiment analysis, it is like given sentence. The question is, what is a sentiment? Answer is negative, neutral, positive. For aspect sentiment analysis, there was a sentence. What is a sentiment on target? Okay. Again, the answer from the model is negative, neutral, positive. It, this is the prompt template basically. For binary classification, given a sentence, question um, and then answer yes or no. And for uh, generative, for named entity recognition, extract named entity from sentence right uh, extract company name or uh, you know this is named entity uh, recognition plus named entity disambiguation so extract ticker over here apple intel things like that okay then question answering given a context and a question generate an answer so these are the template for different tasks or evaluation in the financial domain so the external financial tasks were from these databases one was about a sentiment uh, classification task on sentences from financial news that is FPB. Then they had second uh, sentiment analysis task to predict aspect specific sentiment. That is this FIQA essay, right? And then they had, um, you know, headline. Basically, this is a binary classification task of whether a news headline in a gold commodity domain includes certain information. Okay. So this is a binary classification task. Each article carries a subset of following tags like price or not, price up, things like that. Okay. Then named entity uh, recognition. Uh, task on financial data gathered for credit risk assessment from financial agreements filed with the SEC. This is a confin QA where uh, it includes input from S&P 500 earnings report that includes text and at least one table fin task is to answer conversational questions that require numerical reasoning. Okay, so this is one data set. So these were some external data set. So Bloomberg GPT performs the best of all models over here. Okay, and a strong uh, it shows a strong performance uh, in you know come second in NER. It has the highest win rate among all the models that has been tested on these data sets. Okay, that is what they are saying over here on these tasks as well. So, what are the internal tasks? So, for Bloomberg internal task, they consider aspect specific uh, specific sentiment analysis, which is prevalent in financial. So, these are internal to Bloomberg. The data sets are also internal to Bloomberg. Okay. So there was this, uh, uh, so these are the data sets. Uh, they have equity news sentiment. Task is to predict the aspect specific sentiment expressed in the news story towards a company. Okay. Equity social media sentiment. Uh, again, uh, we use financially relevant English social media content instead of news. 
from transcripts equity transcript sentiment and these are some of the results on the internal sentiment analysis data sets okay again it does better than gpt neo x opt or bloom okay uh, then uh, they have this es news sentiment while the task is to predict aspect specific sentiment expressed in the news story the goal is to integrate effect on investor confidence okay positive negative or neutral country news basically uh, goal to predict the sentiment expressed in the news story towards a country so these are all internal data sets okay another internal data set is for named entity recognition okay where they had uh, uh, named this is uh, named bn wire basically bnner a named entity recognition on entities occurring in english long uh, long form bloomberg news content uh, this is short form news content okay from filings from headlines okay uh, third party english news content ingested by bloomberg that called them and transcripts okay this is named entity recognition task and here also this model performs better than a lot of other models okay in some cases other models performs better they also did named entity disambiguation also and that's the performance which is shown over here on these data sets okay right then they talk about general data sets i will not go into this but they say are saying that their model is competitive on general data sets as well okay for general nlp tasks yeah so this was about bloomberg gpt um, so they have they are not releasing this model as uh, you know an open source model or something right uh, and other thing is that they have shown some examples of generative tasks like using bloomberg gpt to generate valid bloomberg query language so can it actually uh, given some examples of uh, you know queries over here Bloomberg has an internal Bloomberg query language for financial information. So can it actually generate this? So they say that it can generate, it can generate suggestions for news headlines, something like this using Bloomberg GPT to generate short headline suggestions in three short setting. Okay. Uh, Bloomberg news sends many newsletters a day that require these headlines. Bloomberg GPT could help with editing process by suggesting initial headlines for text. So that is headline generation financial question answering again uh, given um, some financial information how can it actually uh, do financial so it can actually um, you know these are some use cases for the generative model okay other than the previous tasks like ner and uh, what do you call ned which is named entity disambiguation okay so then you have uh, you know they talk about why they have not released this model as an open source model where is that let's go to that yeah because they talk about ethical use of this particular uh, model uh, so ongoing debate concerns whether this should be released models not publicly available cannot be fully evaluated especially for a model like um, bloomberg gpt if it is released it can cause it can uh, be misused that's what they are saying over here significant amount because it can be used to create things like press releases news articles filings and things like that right and also they are saying that there could be possible data leakage attacks which can happen over uh, with this re respect to this model because of this strong privacy guarantees they cannot release this particular model that's what they are trying to say but then they also give out chronicles or logs that they plan to release logs of how they have trained the model which could help people generate other models because in this paper uh, uh, they have used uh, uh, like non-open models like GPT-3, Palm, Chinchilla, Galactic. So from that, they have understood a lot while developing this model. Okay. So in conclusion, they say that their training strategy of mixing domain-specific and general-purpose data results in a model that balances performance in both domains. Additionally, this work offers another data point on selecting Chinchilla optimal-sized uh, models. Okay, and these training logs will provide a guide for those training their own LLMs. So this is quite an interesting development. I think more such domain specific models will be released by big companies in the future. That is an expectation for their internal use, obviously. And some may be released as open source, but there is a lot to learn from this paper in terms of, uh, you know, how they have created their data set, how they have developed the model and so on. So in the, uh, your uh, appendix they have actually explained the architecture of the model so you can check it over uh, check that over 
okay so this was a short video on bloomberg gpt if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i'll be putting the link of this paper as well as the news article